Yeah, good evening guys, it's Jim from Jagafix.com. It is Tuesday, 2nd of May 2017 and it's about 7pm local here in beautiful Vietnam. This is actually the second time I've done this video. I did it last night and it didn't upload properly so I've got to do it all again, which I believe. Anyway, that's life. So, um, first up, I just remind everyone that I'm back on the daily charts only. So I'm only trading daily charts. I'm giving the 4 hours. 8 hour, 12 hours, whatever they were, a miss for now. Um, I'm also not getting up for the open of the new daily candle, which for me is at 4 a.m. local. I'm now getting up about 7.30, so I can check it, start checking about 8 o'clock. This way I can place either, um, if the signal's still fairly close to where, uh, well, where, if price is still fairly close to where the signal was, then I'll just take the signal as is. Uh, if it's gone in my favour, I'll definitely take it, but it's still a, um, a valid signal. And if it's gone against me, uh, depending on how far it's gone, I will either place a buy or sell limit order, hopefully where price comes back to the original entry point. Um, or if it's just moved a few pips, like tw within 20 pips or so, then I'll just take it and just wear the 20 pips. But if it's moved 100, I certainly won't just take it, I'll reassess. So on the daily charts, now because I'm on the daily charts only, um, it's out of quite a few pairs, so we'll just go to up here where my pairs are. So if you go to my share spreadsheet, you can. this is the one where my trading is, the Go Markets Daily down the bottom left here, the sheet, and um, there's a demo and a couple other older ones. Pairs traded, sheet on the right. Trading about 29 pairs, including gold and silver and a few exotics I've never traded before. So looking forward to trading them uh, and just getting used to them and how they move. But definitely gold and silver and a few exotics, about 29 pairs and all, that could change. But I just want to give us a bit of action. So we're on the news before, it's a big news week. Um, it's already Tuesday as I said, so the Australian um, interest rates was unchanged today, um, stayed at 1.5, and their statement, the market moved a little bit up, then come back down, so. Then we got some news out of New Zealand, oh, it's supposed to be today sometime, but it looks like, I'm not sure what is the GDT price index, which is to do with their dairy stuff. Um, they've also got employment figures tomorrow morning, um, crude oil on Wednesday as usual, and the big one on Thursday, is the FOMC statement and the federal fund rate out of the US. Not expecting any change there, but they could move the markets. Um, trade balance out of Australia the same day, or later in the day, same with Can um, Canada, trade balance, etc. ECB President Draghi speaks later that day. It's a big week. Then you've got Pol's, Pol Polos speaks, um, Bank of Canada. Then we've got uh, more uh, monetary policy statements out of Australia and then probably the big one on the Friday being the first day Friday of the month on farm payrolls out of the US and also the Canadian employment figures etc then to top it all off with Fed Chair Yellen speaks late on um, for me it's early Saturday morning or late Friday night so there's plenty happening in news um, the FOMC statement and probably non-farm payrolls just be careful of them and also keep in mind too, we've got the second part of the French presidential election coming up very soon also. So you may get notices from your brokers saying that the um, margin requirements will change. So just be aware of that if you trade new uh, European based currencies. So let's get on the charts because we've got plenty of them. Um, I'll probably rush through them pretty quick. Um, the first few charts are the ones I've got the open trades on already. Some good ones, some not so good as you'll see. So we'll just belt through them and we'll see how we go for time wise. So as usual we start with the Aussie New Zealand in a buy here. It's an old trade from the 12 hour charts. Full position. Um, you can see stop at break even. Here's my entry level, the blue line. Remember blue vertical, uh, sorry, blue, blue horizontal lines is a buy level and red is a sell level and also for the vertical lines generally represents the buy area for blue and red for sell. If I have green trend lines, if you see green trend lines on my chart, that's me looking for something bullish, looking to buy. 
if you see blue or aqua trend lines that's just a general trend line that I'm using for some sort of um, um, support resistance or break etc and red ones represent I'm looking to sell so let's just go through the charts the euro USD is next in two trades here a buy which I've closed most of it two-thirds of it uh, we'll stop at break even you can see the buy level here and also in a sell which is um, a long way down here uh, if you see a yellow dash line like that that generally represents an overall break even level for me if I've got multiple trades on I'll work out the break even um, so it's a bit of a mixed bag this one there's still a big gap from last week to be filled so when that gets filled no one knows but at the moment it's semi sort of hedged uh, but not fully hedged so it's basically going sideways just waiting for something to happen there and all right here we go the pound pairs now I've reduced this this will be one of the pairs I'll be removing from this profile I've just got too many great British pound pairs and probably too many yen pairs they're the two currencies that give me all the grief all the problems so I'm reducing them and I'll just be left with the Great British Pound USD Euro Great British Pound and the only yen pair I'll be have for now will be the USD Japanese yen the main one so once this is dealt with I'll be out of it and as you can see I'm in two cells that have gone way against me there's my overall break even all the way down here so I'm looking to trade my way out of this just got to be patient that's all USD Canadian I'm in a buy on this which is good I've already closed two-thirds of it I've got to stop at break even uh, looks like the markets trying to sort of roll over um, I draw these red trend lines in even though they haven't been confirmed as bearish divergences yet I can see possible possible bearish diversion divergence forming hence I draw the rock lines in but nothing happens until I get dots on the MACD and the QMP but that just gives me a heads up so I know what I'm looking at AED Canadian dollar I'm in a buy close two thirds of it already stop at break even pretty much the same looks like I'm you know I'm sort of trying to set up for a double top here the bearish divergence same as previously so that's pretty straightforward once you get used to what color lines I use and that what I'm looking at all right here's the one I took today the Aussie Swiss franc I took a fourth buy on this this is uh, a method I use where it's mentioned in one of my books where I increase my position size my break even so I'm in four trades at 0 0.02 0 0.06 0 0.10 and 0 0.16 so, so I'm fairly well loaded up to the long side it was a nice entry up here somewhere I was a little bit late on the entry because I'm getting up um, that four hours later um, but after the news it dropped right down <laughs> so hopefully it'll have some support on this trend line which is a trend line I used for one of the entries up here for a break so you can see my four buy trades my overall break even the MACD platinum still below the zero level so I've still got confidence that it'll get up there eventually and I'll get something out of this trade but in the meantime I've just got to sit tight and wear it right pound Aussie another problem pair for me um, it's be another one I'll be ditching as soon as I clear this these trades as you can see I'm in two sorry I'm in three sell trades um, a couple of one was an old one from a 12 hour chart hence it hasn't got a vertical line um, looks like price is starting to roll over and when I put a gray vertical line like that in that's just a heads up that the MACD platinum has given me a color I'm looking for so I know to look for the QMP uh, red dot also so at the moment you can see it's a long way above these sell entries so it's going against me all my trades are for the same um, position size it's no problems position wise uh, size wise for me but that's it's a trade it's going against me right problem trade another, another one New Zealand USD I've been in this one for a while look at the buys I'm in mean, two buys and one sell I've taken a partial close on the sell again I've got green trend lines in place looking for some sort of bullish divergence and uh, at the moment I've got two yellow lines here uh, one's a um, overall break even which would be the top one and the second one's just for the buys so 
any profits I make from the sell, I'll use to help uh, reduce the buy, any loss from the buys. But it's a New Zealand USD, and I'm fairly confident I'll get out of this at least break even with all trades. It's a bit of a, bit of a slow moving pair, so we'll just got to be patient again. Euro Canadian, nothing doing here. Um, looks like the gap was filled pretty close to it. It's heading up at the moment, and it, looking at the MACD, it looks like it's just about to try and start roll over, but there's nothing to say anything's happening at the moment, so I've just got to sit tight and watch it. Ah, pound, Swiss franc, another problem child of mine <laughs> in four sell trades. Yeah, here's my overall break even all the way down here, so. This is, this is another one I'll be ditching as soon as I um, get an opportunity to clear some of these trades. As you can see, I've got a red dot on the MACD. It's still way above the zero level. I'm looking for a sell somewhere through here. Hopefully break that trend line, come down, and I'll add more sell trades, and hopefully it'll bring my overall break even up, and I'll be able to get out somewhere. And Euro Pound, another problem child. Um, this will be one I'll be keeping though. Um, in buys here, four buys. Um, these are all from old, the smaller time frame trades, uh, nothing on the daily. Uh, there's my overall break even, it's not that far away. So I'll just try and work my way up to there somehow. Um, now what's that indicator? Oh, Knox will divert. Just ignore these um, indicators on this chart. This is a, just a, something I'm trialing at the moment. And I've got, it looks like I left it on a few charts. It's just a divergence indicator, but it's very aggressive. So yeah, Euro pound, we're just trying to work our way up to that yellow line, hopefully. Uh, could take some doing. Let's have a look at the New Zealand, Canada. I'm in a cell here, which is the wrong way as usual. Um, still got good di bearish divergence here. We're still above the, the MACD, above the zero level. So it's just a matter of working down again. Um, at the moment, I'm still happy to be in a sell there, no problems at all. This is another slow moving pair, so it's just a matter of being patient. Canadian, Swiss franc, uh, in nothing at the moment. We've got a blue dot in the MACD platinum, hence the, um, the dotted line. Um, it's probably gonna turn up, but the trend is heading down, so ideally I'm looking for this to go up. As you can see, the MAs are splitting, so price go up towards the MAs and roll back over to the downside. That would be the ideal. And the MACD Platinum would go up with it also and roll down, sort of thing. That's what I'm looking for. New Zealand, um, Swiss franc. Again, nothing's happening here. I've got the green trend lines drawn in. Um, there's waiting for confirmation from both the MACD and QMP filter. As you can see, price is heading down, but there is possibly divergence, bullish divergence forming there. Just have to wait and see. Let's move across. All right, Euro, Australian dollar. Again, um, we've got a red dot here on the MACD platinum, which is good, so that's rolling over, and I've got to wait for confirmation on the QMP filter. But as you can see, I've got the red trend lines drawn in, anti in anticipation of a possible bearish divergence. MA is getting a bit tight and ugly, and we've just got to be patient as usual. That's the problem with daily charts. It's not like trading 15 minute charts where every 15 minutes something happens. The daily take days. Aussie USD, same deal. Looking, uh, I thought today I may have got a buy signal, but not to be. Still waiting on the a um, green QMP dot to confirm this blue MACD platinum dot. There is divergence there, bullish divergence, hence the grey vertical line. Maybe tomorrow, maybe not, depending on if it, um, the interest rates today. It sort of shot up a bit and it's pulled right back down again. So USD Swiss franc. It's going sideways this one. A um, bit like the euro, I guess. It sort of does the same. If it's going sideways, they both will be going sideways. Um, nothing happening here. Blue dot there. I've got nothing to get excited about. The MA is getting really tight, so just wait. 
USD, Singapore dollar. Now this is a one that I don't usually trade and it's uh, I was trading on the demo and it's going all right. Um, double bottom here and there was a, a buy signal here. I didn't take it. The only reason I didn't take it was because the MACD had just gone above the zero level and it's going sideways. I just wasn't happy with it. I could probably take this signal uh, even though the divergence um, even though the MACD is above the zero level, with divergence, it doesn't really matter if it's above the zero level. So it is a valid signal there, and I could have taken it, and I could probably take it now and get a better price, but I just don't like the look of the, the MAs and stuff. It's, it's all very tight. Maybe tomorrow morning I'll have another look at it if it keeps on heading up a bit. I've, I've got plenty of time still. It's a slow mover. All right, let's move on. The USD, Japanese yen. Uh, again, red trend lines are drawn in anticipation for a possible turn down to the downside. At the moment, it's not happening. So, it's these big red lines. As I said before, this is just another indicator. I'm just trialing very aggressive sort of divergence. Um, but it, we'll just wait and see what happens here. Euro, Swiss franc, big gap, huge gap from the weekend, uh, last weekend from after the French elections. I'd be reluctant to take any trades until that's been filled. That's a big gap. You don't see that that often. Uh, and there's it, nothing really setting up for me anyway. It looks like the MACD is starting to roll over, but I'd need some, yeah, I don't know. I, look, it, if you've got a sell signal up here, like say the MACD gave us a, um, a red dot and also got a red QMP dot, it'd be worth taking the sell there because you'd have to think that that gap's going to be filled. So, on the downside, yeah, I'd have a look at that. Let's move on to Euro New Zealand, another similar to the previous one. Um, the gap was just about filled by looks, not much in it. Uh, again, anticipation, same setup. Um, but here we've got obvious bearish divergence. You notice in the Euro Swiss franc, there isn't because the MACD has gone up above the previous high, whereas in Euro NZ, it has not gone up above the previous high. So looking for a roll over to the downside in the Euro NZ. Um, yeah, all right, let's have a look what we got here. One of the Polish, Zol I think it's Zolti, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, and I do apologize to the Polish people butchering their um, currency. It's, it's an exotic. Um, as I said, I'm looking forward to trying these exotics. I've had a bit of a play with them on the demo. Uh, it's hard to get used to the spread and also how many pips they can move. But it's all relative to how much each pip's worth uh, dollar-wise. So they're just like any other chart. They, they may not move as smoothly. they probably got bigger, uglier candles, but generally shouldn't be a problem trading. And here we're looking for um, bullish divergence, bullish divergence, waiting for confirmation, just like every other pair sort of it seems to be. And this is the Euro-Hungarian foreign, foreign. Uh, I've got to learn how to pronounce these, I think. Um, same deal. This did give me um, bearish divergence, and because it, and I could probably. I was thinking about this yesterday, but the only reason I didn't take it is because the MACD, even though the signal was in here, and it was after the, the, the French uh, part one of the elections last week, price had gone down close to the, um, is now very close to the MACD um, zero levels. Uh, not, the MACD is very close to the zero levels, so I'm reluctant to take it, so I'm just gonna wait and see what happens on this. Now, the USD Mexican peso pair I don't trade at all and it has got some huge moves in pips but each pips only worth like nothing so don't be surprised to see something like 4,000 pip move or something like that but don't get excited by the pips but just be aware uh, I did find out on my um, demo account I was long on this and the swap the interest rate was huge so I'm not sure what it is to the short side but to the long side I was paying a small fortune and it was um, it's, it's something you'd have to be aware of but in the moment I'm in a cell as you can see and it's not really doing much but the MACD is above the zero level there's that big move down um, and 
That big move down looks huge, but when you go out in the chart, I think this is the pair. Look at this big move up from the left, even though it's had some pullbacks, etc. It's still a big move up, so this move down is not that big when you look at the whole, the big picture, I guess. So it's, we've got that divergence, probably a, close to a double top across the MACD, definitely a big down move there. I'd like to see it go down a bit further and rack up some of these huge thousands of pips. Euro, I think that's a Norwegian Krone. And again, we've got the, the same deal. It's um, like a lot of the Euro pairs, Price has shot up really high, whereas the MACD Platinum has not, which has given it possible setup of bearish divergence, as you can see on just a matter of waiting. US dollar Hungarian thing we jig again, and a uh, big gap here to fill, pretty early big gap. So at the moment, possibly be a double bottom on price, and possibly bullet, possibility of double bottom on the MACD Platinum. You can see the MACD Platinum is just starting to show a bit of. Um, turning to the upside but in the meantime nothing happening US dollar Turkish Lira again um, looking for bullish divergence here MACD starting to show some sort of signs of heading up price is not though um, it's a bit of a slow moving pair it has, it's had some big moves especially when Turkey's sort of hassling Russia or doing something silly in the in the region or attempted coups etc so it's, it can be a volatile currency at times uh, it's a new one on me so I'm just learning it myself let's keep on trucking here uh, here we go USD South African Rand um, I've got a blue line there and I'm not sure where I drew that oh now I remember looking for this there was a trade signal here this is one I'll probably take um, this buy, see there, a couple of days ago, uh, three days ago. It, I missed it, only because I only just added these pairs to the charts at the beginning, on Monday, and it sort of shot up against me. Now it's come back down, it's in the area, the region. There's good bullish divergence, and there's still plenty of room underneath the MACD for it to go up. So this is where, if, for example, I was up where the crosshair is, I could set a limit order where it comes down and touches the original entry point and bounces back up. Now, my only concern is um, this is against the trend. See how the MAs are slowly heading down, even though they've got they start to flatten out. It is still against the trend, so I might just watch this tomorrow and see because it is a bearish um, candle. This one, I might just give it a few hours and see what it looks like at eight o'clock in the morning and I'll consider taking a possible buy there. That's the reason I drew the blue dot line there, just to give me an idea where entry price would be. Ah, USD gold, or just gold as I like to say. Um, yeah, not much happening here. I've been following gold for a few months now, not so much live trading, but certainly having the charts open and just watching it. Some nice moves, and I've been sort of demoing it in the background and it's not too hard to pick up the moves when they start so i'm looking forward to actually trading gold and silver which would be the next one but at the moment i just drawn a couple of trend lines there don't look like much is happening and uh, hopefully look at the ma's ma's are getting really tight in here hopefully it'll just bounce off here somewhere and bounce up and we'll take the buy and here's its little brother silver um i've drawn a bottom one here looking for a double bottom possibly it's got to be confirmed and the way that big um, bearish candles did <laughs> it's probably just going to hammer right through that um, and look MACD doesn't look like it's slowing down at all so we'll just have to wait and see see there was a nice double top sort of up here yeah I'm looking forward looking forward to it. keep on saying that but I'm just getting excited I just need some trades to happen and finally pound USD is sort of a late addition I did want to make sure I traded at least a couple of pound pairs and this is the I guess the big daddy of them all um, at the moment MA's look at them they're very tight in there I've got a red dot on the MACD Platinum and we've got bearish divergence there it's not yeah, look it's it is technically bearish divergence but 
I don't know. It's hard to tell with a pound. A lot happened. A lot happens in the UK recently with um, between Brexit and snap elections, etc. And also, it is also affected by the the French presidential elections. So that's it, guys, for the pairs. There's a fair few to go through, um, and it can take a while. And I'll try and make it tidier. Um, and I'll just give you a bit of a tip too, if you. Well, this is my profile, so this is my daily charts. And what I've done here is basically line them up like this. So I can just open them up. These three on the right here, the pound New Zealand, pound Aussie and pound Swiss, they're the three I'm going to ditch once I um, clear those trades, which could take a while. Here's gold and silver, and here's my exotics down here. And the other list, and these three are just the normal ones. So if I want to just go straight to a chart, and... Um, the, you know, I may have made a note on it or something and all I do is like for example this is a New Zealand USD all I do is pull that out a bit so when I look at my profile I just see that that's sticking out so I can just go straight to it there it is New Zealand USD just makes just makes things a little bit easier if you if there's a potential signal coming up and I want to check it fairly quickly or just keep an eye on it that's what I do there so other than that, that's it. Now, hopefully this video will work tonight. Uh, and as usual, I'd like to welcome all new members to the JagFX Facebook group. It's only a small group, but and it's a fairly quiet group, which is not too bad. But if anyone's got any questions or wish to bounce any ideas or just talk about Forex in general, either through the Facebook group's fine. If you've subscribed to the YouTube channel, thanks for doing that also. And feel free to make comments on any videos there. And I'm also contactable by email. So any questions, whatever you got, if you just want to bounce a few ideas around me or just chat about anything in general, all good. So thanks guys for listening and hopefully this one will work and I'll talk soon.